Hello everybody and welcome back to another Code Blue tutorial. Now I really want to apologize to everybody. I know a lot of people have been asking me to make new videos and I haven't recently. Um, as some of you know, uh, I've had the beautiful arrival of my daughter. Um, so I've been quite busy with her and I've also been spending a lot of time working on personal projects that I didn't really have the chance to when I started the YouTube channel up. So, um, Today I am going to do a video and obviously of course I want to let you know that there will be more frequent videos after this um, Like you know the two week gap was kind of a one-time thing shouldn't happen anymore uh, But I do also manage a second channel now uh, which you'll see at the end of the video But um, nevertheless let's get into the video So what we're going to be doing today is quite an advanced topic for beginners and that's networking Now this may confuse a lot of you and if you get confused with this do not worry It took me quite a while to understand this when I first learned it and it can really be a complete pain in the ass but Networking is a very important part of Gary's mod and you know it, You're really limited to what you can do unless you network because if unless you network you can't communicate between client and server scripts meaning that they can't interact with each other so Let's go ahead and uh, open up Photoshop. Now, I do want to tell you guys that I have no script or anything. So if I pause or stutter or do weird things like that, um, that would be why. And that was zoomed in far. Okay, so basically, this is the server, okay? This box here is the server. And uh, this, this little um, computer over here, this is the client, okay? Now, the thing with the client is the client connects. Let me just copy this. Oh, that worked amazingly. There we go. So there's the other clients. Right, now, the thing with uh, clients is clients connect directly to the server. They don't connect to other clients. So let's say I wanted it so that if I typed or if I pressed a button on my screen, it went ahead and made a window pop up on this guy's screen. Now, as I just said, the connection isn't direct, meaning that, let me just do this, meaning that I can't directly connect, okay, uh, meaning I can't connect directly to this client here. So what happens is every client is connected to the server with an individual connection, of course. And then if a client wants to communicate with another client, it will go ahead and tell the server, hey, I want to I wanna communicate with this client. And then the server will go ahead and notify this client that he wants to communicate. And that's how they communicate. And vice versa with the server, if you need to communicate directly with the server, you communicate with the server, the server communicates directly to you. There's never a direct connection between the two clients, which is why... Obviously, networking is such an important thing. And even if there was a direct connection, you would still need to understand networking. So what can we do with networking? Well, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be covering net messages, um, which, in my opinion, is one of the most important forms of networking in Gary's Mod. Um, and that's being able to send little messages back and forth, the client and the server. And these messages contain little bits of information, such as, uh, I don't know, maybe a number or some text or even an entity, if you want. Um, so... Nevertheless, let's get started. So this is going to be confusing, but if I go ahead and open up this, um, if I go into my Gary's Mod folder and then I go into my Lua folder, here we go. You can see here that I have two files that I've created. One's called test underscore client and the other is called test underscore server. So they're two completely empty files. Well, apparently they're not empty. They still have the demo code in from last time. Uh, let's go ahead and close this one. No, I do not want to save. Okay, so... What we're going to do is we're going to make a little demo window, which you should have learned in the previous tutorial. And all we're going to do is make it so that when I click a button on the client, it goes ahead and messages the server and the server goes ahead and replies to us. So let's go ahead. Let's make local frame and we'll set that equal to vgui.create um, dframe. You're going to have to excuse my typing. Um, I haven't really done much typing recently. So anyway, nevertheless, let's go frame and we'll set it size uh, we'll just do 100 by 100 it's really not that important right now then we'll set visible to true then we'll do frame center to put it in the center of the screen uh, frame make pop up there we go now we're just gonna make a quick button here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna parent that button to the frame then we're gonna 
not well we're not even going to set his position we're going to say b dot whoops b dot do click is is equal to a function and here is the function so this is our client side script now we're going to go to the server now and we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up the server side of this now, before any messages can be sent, the server always has to have the message defined. So, uh, the way how we could do that is we could do util.add network string, and this may not make sense at first, but it'll make a bit more sense once we get the whole system up and running. But I'm going to say this uh, message name, okay? It doesn't matter what we call that. Now, that's pretty much it. Now, we need to be ready to receive this message. Actually, we'll go to the client. The client needs to send the message. So, um, if you remember from our last uh, tutorial, uh, b.doClick is a function that will be called whenever a user clicks on our button. So what are we going to do? We're going to do net.start, and this starts a message, and we need to pass a string, which is the message name. This is the same name that on the server we set up, which is message name. So let's go ahead and just put that same name there. There we go. And then we're not going to write anything. We're simply going to do net.send to server, okay? Now, I also want to point out that some of you may be confused because I'm on a single-player game. Even when you're on a single-player game, there is still networking in your game. So there is still a, a, a client and there is still a server. So you still communicate this way. It'll still work the exact same way as it would if you was running a dedicated server. Now, what do we do when we hit this button? We do net.start and we do net.send. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's save this and let's go into our game here. And I'm going to do lure open script. Actually, I'm going to open the server first. This is quite important. I'll do lua underscore open script. Now remember, no underscore CL because this is a server script. I'm going to do test underscore server. And as you can see, our script run, nothing happened. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do lua open script CL. We're going to do test underscore client because this is our client script. And we got an error because I am a genius at coding. Um, so my problem was I did a lowercase f here. Um, Congratulations to you if you spotted that out. Uh, so let's go ahead and rerun that script. And as you can see, we now have this window that's horribly sized with a beautiful button in it. Now, when we click that button, um, nothing happens. We're just clicking it. Nothing happens in our console. Nothing happens in the game. Now, that is because the message was sent, but the server did nothing with it. So we need to make the server do something with it. And the way how we can do that is by doing net.receive. Now net.receive is basically, it's, it's like a hook, but it's waiting for a net message. So let's go ahead and put our message name in here. So it's going to be waiting for the message, message name, which as you remember is the name we defined up here and the name of the message that we're sending from the client. So it's going to be waiting to receive this. And then it's going to call this function when it receives it. So now what we're going to do is we're simply going to go ahead and just print out, I got the message. Okay. Now remember that this is on the server side. So... When this code gets run, it's basically like creating a hook that's going to be called whenever a message is received by the server called message name. Then it's going to go ahead and execute this function. So let's go back in game. Let's go ahead and run the two scripts again. And I press the button. Nothing happens in game. But as you can see in our console, it says I got the message. It says it twice because I pressed it twice. Now, in case you didn't remember, blue in the console means server side and orange means client side. So we know that this was from the server because it's blue. If you have a dedicated server, this is going to be printed in your server console, not in the, the console of your game. Uh, because I'm on single player, it's also printed in my game console. So now that we go ahead and uh, we got this, what else can we do? Well, there's two parameters we can take in the receive function, which is len and poi. Len is short for length, which is the size of the message. You never really need to use this unless you're debugging or you want to you wanna see how big your messages are. And then we have a POI. Now, this is quite important. This is the player that sent the message. Now, a lot of people send the player in the net message and then read that. That's a bad idea because the player can put any player inside that net message. So if you don't understand what I just said, don't worry about it. Just know that this is the player that sent the message. So I'm going to say I got the message from, and then I'm going to go ahead and do POI Nick. And it's going to go ahead and print the nickname of the player that sent it. So now I'm going to go ahead and game. Remember, I've got to run both scripts again. And there we go. And now in my console, it says I got the message from code blue because it was my client that sent the message. So it's my player. Now, I hope that makes sense to you. If that doesn't make sense, um, it will shortly. But what we can also do is we can send messages both ways. So we're going to go ahead and add another network sh uh, string up here. And this is going to be called 
uh, message or client message. We'll call this whatever we want. We'll call it client message. Now, again, you can call these whatever you want as long as they don't conflict with other ones. So name them uniquely. Now, what we're going to do is w instead we're going to say we're going to say we got the message and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do net.start on the server this time and we're going to start the message client message. Then we're going to do net.send. Now, when we're on the client and we send a message, we don't we don't use send to server because we're not sending to the server. We're sending from the server. So instead, we just simply do net.send, and inside the parameters, we reference the player that we're sending it to. So I reference PLY. PLY was the player that I received the message from. So it's kind of like echoing. The player is going to send me a message. I'm going to say I got the message, and I'm going to send a message back. So on the client, in case you haven't guessed, we can do net.receive. And we can put in the message, uh, the name of our message, and we can go ahead and put a function here. Now, this function will be called... Whoops, my spelling is all over the place. This function will be called when... Wow, okay. This function will be called when we receive the message. Now, there is a parameter here, length, but there is no player parameter because the server sending it, not a player. So we can't reference a player here. So here, we're just going to go ahead and say print I received the message from from this oh my god from the server yeah in case you can't see by my time up there it is currently 6 36 in the morning here so i am extremely tired um but anyway uh let's go ahead and see what happens now when we run both of these scripts there we go we click the button and as you can see in console it says i got the message from code blue and then the client said i received the message from the server so in case you're confused you go back here we define two messages at the top of our script, message name and client message. Now, when we click on the button, our client is going to start right in the message, message name, and then it's just going to instantly send it to the server. The server's waiting to receive that message, and once the server does receive it, it tells in the console that it received it from which player it received it from, and then it's going to do net.start, and it's going to instantly send a message back to the client who sent the message, because PLY is the player who sent the original net message, so we're going to send it back to that player. Then that player is going to be receiving that message, and it's going to go ahead and just print out that I received the message from the server. Now, that is a lot to take in, and I do apologize if I didn't explain that as well as you would have wished, but it's quite a difficult topic to explain to somebody, but... I promise you, and I really do promise you, that once you understand that messages, they are incredibly easy. A lot of people get put off by the idea of networking, but I promise you it's not as hard as you think. So anyway, this is cool and all. I mean, we can we can call functions, but we can't really exchange data. So we're going to go a bit further, and we're going to exchange data. So in here on the client where we do net.start, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do net.start right string now if you remember in our first lua tutorial i told you what a string is what a number is and what different data types are when you write data in a net message you have to define what data you're writing so we do net.write and we're going to be writing a string so we can do hello world okay now where as long as we do net.write inside net.start and net.send what it's going to do is it's like uh grabbing a piece of paper writing down the message and then it's going to send it off to the person who receives it that's a basic way of looking at it and if you write the message if you start the message then send the message without writing anything in the message there is nothing in that message to be sent so just remember whenever you write data it's common sense to write it in between the start and the send tags otherwise it's not going to receive any data so we go ahead and we write that now on the server we need to be ready to receive that so when the server receives a net message you need to read the, the data in the same order that you wrote it in so what we did is we wrote a string so we can do the opposite we can make a variable in here called string uh we may not want to name it that we can name it s and we can set it equal to net dot read string so this is going to read the string that was sent in the net message that it received that is the string that we wrote down here now i'm going to go ahead and in here uh i got the message and the message is going to be and then we're going to go ahead and print out s and we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to send a message back to the client because um, we don't need to do that right now. So we're just going to go ahead and print out the data that we received. So if I go back in the game and I run both scripts again, there we go. I click the button and in our console, it says I got the message. Hello world. So it received our message. And in case you didn't know, we can do this twice. Okay. And by doing that, what we can do, sorry, by the way, if there was a little jump cut there, I had to go do something. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be 
send in the data goodbye world as well. Then on here, uh, when we read it, we can say local SS is equal to net.readString. Now, as you guessed, as I already said, it's read in the same order. So we write a string and then we write a string. So we're going to read the first string and then read the second string. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do and. And we'll print out SS. And now we'll go ahead and get rid of all these boxes. We'll go ahead and run our scripts twice. There we go. Run it. And I got the message, hello world and goodbye world. So there was both of our pieces of data. Now you can send whatever information you want. I'll do another example. Net.writeInt. Now the thing with int is it's a bit weird. This is where we type the number that we want to send. Then there is two parameters. The second parameter is the amount of bits that you're going to be sending. So unless you're working with insanely large numbers, 8 to 16 should always cover what you're trying to do. So if you're completely unsure, do 16. But if you kind of know what I'm talking about, go with 8. And if you really know what I'm talking about, then choose a specific number that works perfect for you. We'll do 16 as an example. So now we're going to send the string. Uh, we're going to send an int, sorry, which is a whole number. Then when we want to receive that whole number, we do net.readInt just like read string except in the parameters we have to define the amount of bits that were sent so we sent it with 16 bits of data so we've got to read it back with 16 bits of data and when we go ahead and just print out s now um we can go back into our game run both scripts and voila i got the message 1337 which is a number by the way it's not a string now i hope that made sense to uh to a lot of you that may have been extremely confusing too um but yeah don't forget that you can do net dot write entity and you can do net dot write bool and you can do uh net dot write float you can do all those sorts you can write any data you want in the message and as much data as you want well there is a limit but you probably won't reach it so once you've written the data you send it to the server if server's ready to receive it, it can read that data. And vice versa, you can send it to the client the same way as I showed you earlier. So I hope that made sense to you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video. But don't forget, if you are a big fan of music, be sure to check out my secondary channel, Inside Sounds, where I just post cool songs that I find and uh, I hope you like them. So, yep, thanks for watching, everybody. And I will see you in the next video.